how to write or to read. Many people that has no hospital or a school. You have here 400 universities in the United States. And if you ask how many universities we have in Latin America, how many schools you will find, how different is this North America of the center and South America. They have not the lot of factories you have here. They have not the lot of school, the lot of hospital that you have here. The other part of this hemisphere is not the paradise that you find here in your country, but something like heaven. Help. Help. Yes. And you, what we the American, Latin American country want is to develop our economy, to develop our natural resources, to get the standard of living that you have here in the United States because we think that the economical development of Latin American country in any sense will demise United States economy as the development of Canada didn't damage and instead of it improve the relations, the commercial and the trade relations between Canada and the United States within that a new era of, era of prosperity, prosperity will, begin, will begin in this hemisphere when South America country develop their economy. So that is why we think that the ideals of our country are not only theoretical democracy, but real democracy that means real human rights and between them the right of work, the right of life. And that is why we call human humanism humanism the humanism that there is how we call our our ideals and we can some then not neither freedom without bread nor bread without freedoms freedoms and bread So our ideals are in any sense in an opposition to your ideals. The ideals of the Latin American country can march together with the ideals of the United States. And so in that, in that for that way, we will find and we will tell that this is really the hemisphere of freedoms and, and happiness, human rights and happiness that we think it ought to be the ideal of all America, so South, Central and North America from one end to the other end. And so, So you are the youth of this big nation. You will be in the future those who lead these nations. And the Jews, as we think, is the most valued part of any nation because it was had been poverty. For example, in our country, it was the youth who led 
the Cuban Revolution. It was the Jews, and between the youth, the import, the, the, the students played the most important role. As you know, the president of our university, several presidents of our student university were killed, were assassinated by the dictatorship men. And so many students died in the, in the struggle for uh, freedom. And you are a student, and you are Jews. And mo most important than that, than that is that not a cold youth, not a, a indifferent student, that meeting proof your interest, that meeting proof your enthusiasm, your interest in those questions. And that is the most important thing, because any mistake can be overcome if there is not the interest. Any mistake or any, any obstacle, obstacle. obstacle can be overcome without interest. And for we that have discovered many things, that have wiped many prejudices, this meeting of this night will be one of the most unforgotten impression that we will carry on with us when we leave this country. And the only thing I, I can tell to you, and I can tell you a few things, I can teach you a few things only, but I can tell one of my own experience and of the experience of the Cubans. The life, it is only good to be lived if, if you have some aim in your li life without aim, without an ideal, without a dream, live is live is a lack of sense, live lack of taste, taste, because when you have to open a book to study, to learn, if you have not a name important, a pretty beauty aim, beauty ideal, you don't like, you have not reason to, to study and to be hours studying. And only a big ideal gives sense to the life and Jews all need the ideals, need the dreams to give some, to give sense to their life. With ideal and with faith, all things are possible, and as all you ought to observe, and all, as all you ought to have thought, your country is now playing a very important role in the world, and you, the youth of the big nation, are called to play a very important role in the future of the humanity. Now, as I suppose you have something interesting to ask me, you want to know several things. Somebody said you were a terrible questioner because there were many lawyer students here. <laughs> and so, I'm going to give you the, the word to answer any question. Nevertheless, nevertheless, any, any important, never mind, never mind. If they are terrible persons, I feel that we can try to answer them. Thank you very much.
the questions, because again of the complexities of modern electronic communication, the questions will have to come from a battery of prepared questioners. I had a chance to see some of these questions. They seem to me, even for Harvard students, unnecessarily sharp. But uh, Dr. Castro has explained that this does not bother him, and I think you can now see why. Who has the first question, and will he read it? Dr. Castro, my name is Charles Edson. I am a student at the Harvard Law School. Let's not waste time, gentlemen. How have you enjoyed? How have you enjoyed your visit to the United States, and what are some of the highlights of your visit? That's too easy. <laughs> well, of course. I, I, I said my impressions of the beast. I said that some prejudice disappeared for me with this beast. And I, I feel that I know better now the people of the United States. And I found a real sensitive people in this travel to the United States because I think we didn't know you and we really don't know you well, and you don't know us well. And it is this necessary that you and us know better. And uh, in this piece, it, that is the impress one of the impressions. And I, I suppose that they have a real known of the spirit and the virtues of the uh, United States people. That is the most important thing I have observed here. Another idea I told in my, my first fair words. Okay. Thank you. Next question. My name is David Levinson, and I'm a student at the Harvard Law School. Dr. Castro, the popular press in this country has carried reports of the trials that have been taking place in Cuba. I wonder if you would give me the legal justification for these trials. Of course. Do you know what happens generally in all revolutions? What happened the first day, the second day, the third day? What do the people do? Have you heard about revolutions in Latin America and in other countries? The people take the chance of being revenge, take the opportunity of revenge. Hundreds of people are killed in the streets. Hundreds of houses are assaulted. And so, first time in our history, in the history of the world, one revolution, one real revolution because it was not a coup d'etat, by military forces was the fight of one people against one modern arms that have been killing Cubans, tortured Cubans, and destroying our freedoms during seven years. And when at the last, the victory was with the people, nobody took revenge. Nobody killed anybody in the street. Why? because we were seven years speaking to the people. When we get the victory, don't kill anybody in the street, don't assault the house, because the, he the revolutions in the history has been discredited for those disorder, for that anarchy. And so the people believed in us, because we said don't kill anybody, because that is not the way and we will make justice. Every time when dozens of young were assassinated, we told to the people, Sunday justice will, will take place and will punish that criminal. When women were violent, when Joe's students were tortured, when mass farmers were assassinated as 
a system of terror so that they don't help us. The only thing that make us to keep our conduct because we never kill a prisoner, we never leave wooden in the battlefield because there is the International Red Cross that can speak how many thousands of wounded we saved and we gave them after big battle in where our few arms got the victory. And so during all the war, we kept the honorable and the human conduct. And when the war finished, we had only a duty with the people, with our ideals, with the judges. And it was to punish those war criminals in the same way that you punish war criminals of other nations. Those were war criminals that have assassinated their own brothers. In our country, we had the right to punish them. They have violated the law of Cuba, the law of revolutions, because since we began the revolution, we had our court and we have had our law. When revolution take the power, the tyranny fell down. There was not the power of the tyranny. There, there was a new power, the power of revolution. We did what your constitution and your Jefferson advised that one, the human right of a people are violated, the people have the right of, of rise against tyranny and to establish new government form. And we can ask what to do with those who destroy the freedom of the man, what to do with those that destroy the life of man only for the purpose of robbing millions of dollars, what to do, what to do with those that violate human rights only one thing, to punish them. During four centuries, since the first Indian assassinated by the Spanish, until the last John assassinated by Batista, nor in Cuba, nor in any other country of America, there was justice. Only first time in the history of Latin America. One people is punished to their, ver to their verdugos. First time. So, yes. And sometimes we ask, how can we be misunderstood? Understood? How is possible? Because there is not justice in the middle of the impunity. Where is not democracy possible? under the democracy, demo, democracy, spirit. Uh, well, under the danger of the tyranny carried by military groups, there is no democracy possible if you don't defend democratic ideal, if you don't punish those who kill that ideals. And so we have asked how it how is possible that to punish those criminals we have need more wars, more reasons and more arguments that the reasons and the arguments that the tyranny and the war criminal needed to submit during century to the people of Latin America. It has been hard to us to punish criminal that it had been for the criminal during century to kill people. Next question. David Epstein, Harvard Law School. Dr. Castro. As a law student, I should like to know how you reconcile with your concept of justice the case of the 24 Cuban airmen who, having been acquitted by a revolutionary court, 
were ordered retried by you and found guilty. Is it very clear that case? What happened when somebody is accused and of crime and is not agree with the sentence? What happens? He appeals. He appeals the sentence. The, his lawyer can appeal his sentence. So what is the district attorney? What does it represent? It represents the people. That is the victim in this case. And why the current criminal is going to have the right to appeal and the people that is the victim of tyranny is not going to have the right to appeal to. <laughs> you want something else? <laughs> I can tell the story that if you read the history of uh, the current process, the guarantee, judicial guarantee, you know that it, they were created to protect in the Middle Age the people against tyranny. Because at that time, the absolutist role, Roa, used to keep their, keep their power persecuting the people and committing all kind of injustice. That was the reasons of the guarantee. So they were established to protect the people against tyranny. And so we, as we're accustomed in Latin America to tyranny, we were worried for that guarantee. Now, agree with this principle that I have said you, equality in, against the law, equality before the law, it is, I don't, I don't know how it's possible to be surprised that you give the same right to the people that is the victim to the criminals. And so, in this case, it is not to protect the persecuted people, but to protect that men that were assassinated, the people, during seven years, torturing people during seven years. Sometimes it is difficult to understand the things for example, in our country, we had not that pain. And when we heard that here in United States, so uh, we are sending to the electric chair of the gas camera, some, uh, pass you now, pass you. <coughs> those men that kill by passion, passion. not for political reasons, <laughs> And that that men were sent to the electric chair, we didn't understand well that severe measure. But now we have the experience that we are not understood well. But the truth is that the political crime to torture people every day as happened in Cuba, where many policemen stations were converted in center of torturing young people during years, where we found the, the tools of torture. We found hundreds of proof, the wall with the blood of our revolutionary in the in that crimes to kill one day after day, day after day, 
is in all condition worse than patient patient crimes and here you condemn patient crimes in Cuba we are tortured and assassinated about 20,000 young people you didn't know here in United States why because there was censorship now why you know that we are punishing war criminal why you know all the incidents of our justice all the detail because there is not censorship because it is all the things that happen in Cuba are known in all the world so that the world have its own opinion because we don't hide anything and we are sure We are sure that if here in United States some government torture and kill 600,000 of people, if there were here thousands, hundreds thousand of mothers asking justice in that case, I am sure that you who punish with death other crimes that are not so so important, we, you would punish number bigger of war criminal than those we are punishing because we are only punishing the worst, not all, because there were thousands of men complicated in crime, thousands of men that were complicated in terror during years. You don't know what is tyranny. You had the good luck of living here in a normal country in which since you were born, you only see the fulfilling of the law. You are sure at all of your freedom, of your constitution. You are not worried of generals to take power by force. You are not worried by the army to take in power by force. And you have no idea what is that, what is to live without freedoms, under the fear, under the terror, without the right of election, of right of, of speaking, going to bed, at 8 o'clock or at 9 o'clock, the mothers, the engineers, being afraid of their husband, of their sons, that be taken in the middle of the night from their houses and disappeared without knowing where are their, their bodies, dead bodies. You don't know that. I am sure that if you have lived under that situation, you would, will be more severe than us because you, in the history of law, have been more severe than us. question. Dr. Castro, Roy Shotland. The postponing of elections in Cuba has been explained by the need for special powers to fulfill your revolutionary reforms. Don't you feel you would have even greater powers if the people were allowed to speak through the polls? Okay, I'm going to answer some confusions about our matters are consequence of all habit of seeing our problems. You, the Jew, the Joe, and the people of the United States have the habit of here to speak about revolutions. 
in that case, the world revolution is not well used. Because when some group, white constitution, and take power over, take power by force, they don't want free elections because they cannot give free elections because the people is not agree with them. And so they use it to lack to last election. Don't give election. And when they give election, is one Trump, one, uh, one uh, the, the, the result, I'll change it. I don't know how you call it here. A false, false. And our case is quite different so that you have not applied the condition it reflects over our revolution. Reasons. First place, this was not a movement of military. It was a fight of people. The victory was only possible, as you ought to think, because the, su the support of the people, without the support of the people, a small group of not trained men with all arms would never defeat a modern army with tanks, airplanes, machine guns, hundreds of million dollars, supplies, bulls, that were trained to defeat a surround group between, between that was circled by sea, by air, and by earth, yeah. land, land. It was only possible because we are not superman, supermen, that to defeat them by the help of the people. So when the revolution finished, it was proved that all the revolution, all the people, almost all the people were supporting the revolutionary government. And so we had in Havana a mass meeting of one million people. And this is the only revolution in the world, in the world history of in those times that has such a lot of, of, of people support that is over 90% proved with surveys and many other evidence that like this, for example, or like the meeting, for example, that meeting proved that more than 50% of the people, of the students of this university are interested in Cubans matter. The participation of about 50,000 uh, policemen said 35, somebody believed that there were 50,000 people in the Central Park of New York proof that the biggest part of the Cubans of New York are with revolutions. And so in this case is the only in the history, 94%, no government, not revolution. Have you have a study revolutions in the history were made by minority and to go on they established terror. This is one case of a revolution without majority of people as a consequence of our human principle that don't preach the hate between classes, but that call the people in a national purpose and call people of all the class. So we got so a high level of support. And what that means? That means that the people that is, who has the sovereignty is helping the government. In the history of revolutions, we are minority. In the minority. In this revolution is a majority. And that is uh, one of the reasons why we can make the laws with free press, 
with all the human rights without any difficult because the majority of the people is agree with revolution. Well, that is one part of your question. We have now the biggest part of the people and the biggest part of the people is who has the sovereign right first place. Second, to give election, there are necessary political parties. All political parties disappear under tyranny. Those that were not collaborated became revolutionary. There are not political parties, party, but revolutionary sectors that all they help the revolution, and now they feel they are the power. So political party, first place, are a consequence of public opinion state public opinion state, public opinion state are consequence of criticism about measure of government. So it is necessary that the measure be considered by the people, that that consideration become in public opinion state, that that public opinion become in political party, that they organize themselves in political party, agree with the law. And so there are necessary other conditions, political census, to know the number of voters that we have. And that need time. How can we give tomorrow a political election without political party if they are not organized? We have the most interest in having the election as soon as possible, because as you know, power, Spain. Many people believe that the sins are going to be solved in three days, in three months, and in, in the reality proof that it takes time. Some people will become not con conform with the government. If we give the election tomorrow, we will have more votes than in two years or three years. And so we are the most interested because more will, will last, more possible on, on happy people until the limit, until the limit. Less vote than now. So that proves that we are the most interested. First thing I want to tell you, power for us is a sacrifice, not a pleasure. It is to a sacrifice. Not the business. Here, what they do now here to defend our revolution, to defend our government, not business. If I don't sleep, if I work, have a lot of work, is because I love my country, I love the revolution, and I make all sacrifice possible. The sacrifice of an honest government possible, nobody could know until living. You have your time to sleep, you have your Saturday, your Sunday to go to movie, to have a good time. I am a young man like you, and I am little older than you, or, 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 older than you, of course. But no time or any that thing. I would like to be reading, studying, learning. I lack, lack time for that. And the first measure we take in Cuba was to lower our own salary. If I were now writing books, possible I would earn some money. It's possible that when we, I finish government, I have not so many people interested in that books, in that impression. So in this case, in the opposite of all our we lost money being in power. We lost time, the place. So, what the interest would we have in being in power? Don't you think that sometimes one have wish of being a part of the people, far of the people? 
be sleeping, resting, because there are two ways of solving political affairs. More time or more job. Our system is not more time, but more job. And so that is why we want to do it as fast as possible, because fast as possible, so that as fast as possible our people reach the pro profits of our revolution. And the fourth thing I want to tell you is that many times we live with conventional lies. Sometimes we call democracy to some appearance of democracy. Do you believe, would you answer, do you believe that there is some democracy possible on their ignorance? Do you believe? I think it's got to be a different kind of democracy. But, well, on the, the first base, or the one of the base of democracy, is the light, the norm, the, 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 the culture of free people. One man that doesn't know how to read or to write, half a, a complex of himself, he looks, I, I can tell you that they look, they say, of some stupid, they are worried, they believe that they don't know to do anything. So that man, would not be a good, a good citizen. Democracy is not possible on over real democracy, over hungry, because those politicians, politi political machinery, they go to buy boats to give a small service. In Cuba, for example, they just, if some family wanted that his son go to the school, as there were a few schools, the politician Make the, make the favor, okay, I'm going to send your son to the school. You have to give me the boat. If son of the family was ill, Ill and needed a bed in the hospital, they gave the same favor. If son was unemployed, they could use their influence to that. And in other case, give him money. So there was a lot of corruption. And over that condition, there is not real democracy, but oligarchy. And oligarchy is not democracy, as you ought to know. And in our country are now 700 people unemployment. What is our first job? To solve, to develop very fast our economy, to give work to the people. Our first job is to earn all the time that all other government lost. How? Well, establishing a school, making a strong campaign against ignorance, so that in one or two years, everybody knowing Cuba how to write, to read, to build hospital, and to establish the real base of democracy. Because if we now, tomorrow, if we tomorrow, Give the election because there were political party, well organized, census, suppose all that, but 700 employees, many, many, many necessity in the people. Well, that necessity would be employed by political, if not now in the future, for getting the power. That would be used for some group to take the power by money, by using the money. And that would give the opportunity not to that ignorance people, but to that, that people who had the privilege of going to the school or having a better economical position. And so sometimes one political position seems to be right and it's not the right position, it's the position that helps some group and what we want to establish in Cuba are the basis of a real democracy over social justice, freedom and bread.
I think it will be clear in the context that uh, Dr. Castro was speaking of 700,000 unemployed. Uh, next question. Dr. Castro, Charles Werhain. Back in 1953, you recommended two things for Cuba. One, nationalization of those industries, particularly public utilities, located in Cuba and owned or financed by United States interests. And two, industrial profit sharing. Then, at a later date, you referred to those earlier recommendations of yours as, quote, radical ideas not good for Cuba, end quote. Now, more recently, you have placed the local Cuban telephone subsidiary under government control. This action leaves some of us confused about your policies towards business. Would you please explain your policies relative to one nationalization of privately owned industries and two profit sharing relative to private industry? Is, there is, uh, it is the op right the opposite. There is not any confusion. What is some confusion is in your question. <laughs> or that means possible that you are not very well informed. <laughs> because you said to me that they recommended the nationalization of industry, principally those of public service. And it was not so. We didn't speak about nationalizing industry. We said about nationalize public service company. That we, I said in my own defense as our program in the judge after the first attempt of defeating dictatorship. And I spoke too about the participation in the profit for the laborers, in the factors. Well, as you said, and that is well, some far further, I said that that position nationalizing was some radical position, that our interest, it was that the people be not exploited for that company and that the prices were just. And so, when the revolution took power, what we did, first place, during the dictatorship, during tyranny, the telephone company, the same day when the student attacked Palace, when Jose Antonio Chavarria, president, of the student of Cuba was assassinated and his name is in some his name is here in this how do you call it plaque that the United States National Student Association gave us today with the name of San Antonio Chavarria. That 13th day of March 1957 the same day when the city was under terror and the street were uh, with the blood of the student, the company went to palace and that day they were they had prepared the agreement. But that day, that very day was signed, for, was decreed the law with Batista giving to the company such privileges that were really unacceptable for the people of Cuba. That they took the opportunity, possibly giving some business to dictator to get a treat that was 
against the interest of the people of Cuba. And so after revolution, we didn't nationalize it. What we did was to, to, wipe, to wipe that decree. business to dictator to get a treat that was against the interest of the people of Cuba. And so after revolution, we didn't nationalize it. What we did was to, to, wipe, to wipe that decree, to this, revoke the decree, the Batista decree in favor of the company. And then to the same some man, to intervention in the company, to know the real state, economical state of the company, to establish the just prices, the just price pr uh, prices for the, the by the funds, because there were cases in which some family had to pay eighty dollars month by their funds, but they because they established some special tariff. Tarif, but no control in the count, in the counts. And so the family have to pay what they say. That was not just government revoked the decree with the privileges and named a man to interview and to know. The consequence until now have been that it has proved many spades that were not necessary. Many Spain that figured as in propaganda, as in many other scenes, to some lot of money, to some friends to write. And they have saved it. In, in second, I agree with the calculation, one million dollars of Spain's the intervention. The second, the program of the below men of the of the lines to, to establish new funds because they are where in Cuba. Six, 60,000 people asking for funds, some of them with 10 years waiting already their funds. Yes, waiting. When some general asked the fund, he had the fund very soon. With, when some gambler need the phone, he had the phone speedily on the itinerary. Ah, but when common family has a phone and had to wait 10 years, 12 years until Greek calends, no, Greek calends, to wait for their phone was not that just. Now, the plan of establishing the, 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 the new funds are new, new, new rates are faster than before. And we are studying which are the just price so that to defend the people because the right of the people are before some private interest. And that is what we are doing, not nationalize. And have you had you some news about some nationalizing in Cuba? I said that could, would be radical. That is the same with the profits to divide. It is the same to hide the salary than to divide the profits. And so that was only the way. And to divide the profit could be not the best. Could be best to hide the income of the labor. I the, the the salary and if the condition permitted. And that are the two points in we we have made some change, a point of view, not in the other, because there are many points in our program to nationalize.
because really it was not going to solve the difficulties because we were going to need a lot of money to pay that company and we need money now for new factory for the industrial development of our country. And so the best and wise measure is to use that money for establishing new industrial industry to find a employ for our unemployment. So you can be quiet and not worry at all for the nationalization of that country. If calm is established on the business sector, we'll take the next question. Dr. Castro, I'm Richard Rubenstein from Harvard College. I'd like to ask you, sir, I think that, Amer that many American students would be interested in knowing what books have influenced your thinking and what great men in history your career. <laughs> well, really. Books. Really. I, if I would ans ask you the same question, you would say that you are a patriot at Washington, Jefferson. And uh, that I can answer the same thing. Those who has who has influ influence in us more were our patriots, as Martí, as Céspede, as Agramonte, our fighters during the independent wars, because the Jews studied the books of the, their own history in the school. Those first impressions, those first books you read in your first years are history, own history books. And the impression they make over you are strong. At that time, you didn't study philosophy. You didn't read another books. But in the first year you studied your own history. And so, as we had one uh, wonderful thinker, wonderful patriot, and uh, they began our history, they make the root of our revolution. They, they took the road those Cuban thinker and fathers of our country are the most that influence in us. And to our liberators in Latin America and North America, we have got to the, the influence of the thinking, thinking of Bolivar, San Martin, Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, all day that had very beauty thinking. And so, as they are not, they are is not, there is not exist any absolutely on thinking. I think that all those who have written about political, economical, or, or social matter, not especially, but had some influence in us. And in about you are you are uh, fundators between the Washington and Jefferson and Lincoln have it. A, a lot of influence in our use. For example, there is one thing of Jefferson that I, we like very much, and it is that law and institution ought to go hand to hand with the change of the human minds and with the invention, with the circumstance. That proves that you are fathers the fundator of this country, one century ago, they were established that the circumstance changed, that the mind, mind changed, and all law and institution ought to go hand to hand with that change. And now, in this minute, we, your country and our country, is, is finding new problems that have to solve. And so our law and our institution and our measure ought to go hand to hand with that change.
Shall we try two more questions? Let us have uh, high, hard ones. Dr. Castro, my name is Derek Winans. Uh, large segments of the American press have characterized you in rather unfavorable terms. Uh, I wonder if since you've been in the United States, you have distinguished between true American public opinion towards uh, Cuba and South America and that as represented in the press. I will repeat the question because I'm not sure everyone heard it. Uh, Dr. Castro has been subjected to considerable amount of criticism uh, in the American press. Uh, during his visit to the United States, has he come to distinguish between uh, real opinion in the United States and what is uh, printed in our uh, papers. I'm uh, repeating the question, not uh, endorsing it. <laughs> well, really during some time, there was, uh, really during the war, the press defense our revolutions. After revolution, in regardless with the, the the trial against war criminal began the crisis and so and other consideration other campaigns as you know the revolution have enemy and if they had not enemy they were not revolutions revolution and so some some in some way the publication began to separate of the feeling of the people. But as you know, thinking with, with in the, in the reality, the press and the public opinion don't go large, large uh, time uh, in different way. At last, press contributes very much to make public opinion. And at last, the public opinion are modeled, modeled by press. What I think here uh, is that I have seen that the, the press have changed very much about Cuban revolution. And I agree with the public opinion. And I have not that difference as a consequence of the answers to many questions and the explanation we have given of revolution. And now we find a better, uh, better support in the press and, of course, a big support in the public opinion. Only for one reason. For example, there were some doubts really in the questions, it have not pre proved a lot of interest for our problems. Here I, I as visitor have found many questions that are only questions in relation with the interests of the United States, not with our Cuban interests. And uh, uh, I think that the, the public opinion ought to be worried for their own interests problem and the problem of their neighbor too, the problems of the visitors. Most of questions were in re re regardless with communism and with trial, free election, many things, not positive, not asking about our creation in Cuba. What are we doing for our people? What we are doing for the happiness of our people, which are our revolutionary Law. They have been, most of them, inquisitive questions, but I don't bother that. But I never, I don't, don't worry for that. I have had answered very, great, very lightly that question, but I had made that observation. In, but it proved one thing, 
that we don't bother criticism, that we can, we can respect free press, because I came here where many newspapers were attacking us very strongly, and I was not afraid, I was not worried, I had faith in, faith in the people, I had faith in our reason, and so I came here to speak, and if we could hear to speak and to clear with an adverse press, part of the press adverse, that means our democratic blood, our democratic feeling, and that only democratic men can answer, can speak, can come here in this disadvantage to speak and to answer all the critics. Call here some dictatorship, call here Trujillo, call here other dictators of Latin America to explain their hundreds of millions, to explain the assassinated of, uh, of Murphy, assassinated of the teacher of the Columbia University, Galindez, the assassinated of news, Dominican newspaper here. Call them to explain there are 30 years of dictatorship government, and you will see that they don't come. Come here, Robert, and they will not come. Come here unsincerely and on dishonest man, and they will not come to speak to such a big, free, and inquisitive press, inquisitive aguda. And they were absolutely free reporters, not my friend, not of our political party, only as observer. And we really are very happy now, not only with the public opinion but that supported us, because you are a sensitive people, but to, to the press and to the reporter that they have been supporting us during the revolution and are supporting now just the with just now. It is perhaps fitting that our last question should come from a lady. Doc Dr. Castro, Judith Gottlieb of Radcliffe College. Please. That's not fair. <laughs> Sir, what attitude would you take towards possible revolutionary movements in other Caribbean countries? And might you give military support to such revolutions? Yes. I spoke yesterday in my Spanish speech to the Cubans the Dominican, to many Latin American countries, Latin American people that meet yesterday and that were here in all Latin American countries by radio. And it spoke very clear. The Latin American countries were, were trying during a long, during long time to get one principle, the principle of no intervention as a protection from the intervention of this, the United States in Latin American nations. So it was a conquer of the Latin American country. And just was Roosevelt who established that principle of good, good neighbor that was so well reached by the Latin American country. So that is a principle that we ought to keep because it is protection of our sovereignty. So now we are in this situation. Many dictators, some dictators are out. Thousands of exiled people. We would like to help them. We would like to go 
retaining crowd. But we find that we are government. We find that we need to save our revolution, that we need to become our country in an example of America. Our revolution is something like a hope, Latin America, and we have to save our revolution. We cannot violate the no intervention principle because we would be destroying one principle that was conquered for the public opinion of Latin American country. So our help is a solidarity, our feeling with them, that is a very important thing to our country as a house for them, our thinking and our uh, written and our speaking, speaking about the right of the people of being free. So we speak about that right. We, uh, we have said that the public opinion of all America could overthrow dictatorship. So our helping to them is a, is a moral help, a spiritual help, and giving them animals and hope, not an intervention, because we cannot destroy the political, the, the principle of no intervention. Not always the heart and the mind can march, the heart and mind ought to march, agree. Not always the wish and the interest of the people can march together. In this case, really, we would like, but we cannot do it for the reason, the powerful reason that I said you, and we as government have to know quite well our responsibility, how to know, how to know well the means of helping, because are not always the arms, the weapons, the means. I believe in the peoples. Revolutions start in the people when they have faith and they, they, and they decide to free for themselves. Many, our example in Cuba is the best help we can give to that people under tyranny. We proved that it was possible to fight against dictatorship. Our example have full of animals to that people. And now we continue helping them with our soli moral solidarity and our feeling. And we are sure that that people will be freedom for themselves without violation of the principle of no intervention. He wants to say one word more. The only thing I want to tell you to finish is that we would like that you go to Cuba to see by yourself the revolution that is taking place in our country and how happy is our country and so that at the same time that you know the truth, you learn by an experience, you are, you learn by experience that is a good way and to, to give some subjection about our uh, problems. We would like that you, the student of Harvard, and in general, the student of the United States, uh, visit Cuba the most number possible. And we are going to prepare some places, 
so that in summer, the students, thousands of students from the United States and Latin America can go to Cuba with few expense, because I see, think you have not very lot of money to spend <laughs> travel to Cuba to help you to go. But what we want is that you visit us so that you know better our country and to improve the relation and the friendship between your youth and our youth. That means our generation and our nations. Thank you very much.